In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a summer wave using the wet underpainting technique. And that is a fancy way to say that I'm going to use a brush and some isopropyl alcohol to wash in the dry pigment that I am setting up right now into the paper. So eventually I will end up with a watercolor-like design and I will be later creating my wave with a dry pastels on top of that. Why I'm doing this? Well, otherwise this white of the paper is just going to show like you see right now there's a lot of white showing through the colors and I don't really want that so by diluting that pigment creating more smooth color underneath and the color in the value that I want it to be lighter or darker I am going to avoid this effect this annoying effect I'm working on saying it paper it's a special sanded surface for pastels it's not just hardware sanded paper and there are different types this one i don't think they make this anymore there is still art spectrum brand and you can use it this one was art spectrum super tooth it was a little bit thicker it reminded me of a watercolor paper but with this very abrasive surface you can definitely use other papers maybe you already have some sanded papers and the only thing i would suggest that you try a little piece with isopropyl alcohol and make sure that that abrasive surface is not being destroyed by it so that you can be sure that you can do your project your full project on it and I also suggest that you use white or off-white or neutral surface neutral paper so that your color is still pretty close and the values are pretty close and it's not to say that you cannot make a wave on gray or brown or any other color paper you definitely can but it just won't be the same process if you want to do the wet and the painting technique it's better to give yourself a full range of values right from the start in case you want it so that you still have that light color of the paper and you can create the darker colors as dark as you need to which is not really possible with underpainting on darker surfaces if you would do that I am moving pretty fast here this is a time lapse but I also have a video here on YouTube that goes more into detail at every step of the process and that is a recording of a live demo a few years ago I think a couple of years ago I did it you can watch that and also I just released in my online school a mini course that is based on two demos of translucent waves one is turquoise color palette one is more green so it gives you a range and if you are interested in painting the seascapes I definitely suggest that you check out that link in the description below in my courses I'm explaining everything I'm doing why I'm doing it and also I provide the illustrations tips and all that wonderful stuff so that you really understand how I'm painting those waves uh, what my process is so that it's easier for you than to not just repeat a wave after me the demo reference but also to take your own references your own waves and do a great job painting those but let's get back to our wave here and you can see I already set up quite a bit of the base color and not just on the painting but also with a dry pastel and I usually start pretty much always start with building the base of the wave that base gradient from the darker at the bottom where the wave is the thickest and as it's rising the wall becomes thinner and it actually lets more light pass through it and that's why it's lighter greens as we see the wave rising 
and we don't really see the very thin part of it here. It's covered by the foam falling down and also the wave already quite a bit curved at the top. And before I start with my really light colors, I want to make sure that for the foam, I'm building the foundation of those darker, well, not darker, darker blues, but within the lighter range and light mid-tones, I build those blues, those lighter purples, because they will become shadows within that cloud of the foam that is falling down. And I want to show the volume. That's why I need a range of those values. And also before I start working on any detail, any foam spray for the wave, on the wave, I want to make sure that the background is ready because the foam will be overlapping it. I want that background actually to be finished more or less before I start developing the middle ground, basically the wave, the center of interest here. I'm shaping the waves in the background using the colors and the values and the part of the wave that is more raised, kind of trying to be more vertical, it's going to be greener and the parts of the water that are between the waves, those are more blue because they reflect the color of the sky more. And also the waves that are closer to us are going to be a little bit larger. And then as they are receding, they are becoming smaller and smaller, basically just stripes of darker greener or darker blue color in the distance. And once that is done, now I can also start developing this layer of foam, basically bringing some of those foam lines, foam patches in the foreground, because I have this nice kind of lighter green, grayish green, bluish green set up in the foreground. And that is for the water that we see between the foam, between those patches of foam and lines of foam. And I also work a little bit on that edge of the wave where we see the foam or water kind of breaking off that curvature and starts falling down. That part is lighter. So anything that basically is foam right now, now that I have those colors, I can touch a little bit those kind of lighter mid-tones. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm setting up the colors for the foam that are a little bit darker right now, not the full strength highlights, because if I use very light colors right away, I won't have the depth within that foam. I won't have that three-dimensional look, because if it's just one tone, everything will start looking flat. And I won't be able to create any kind of highlights or sparks, uh, sparkles on the water, on the foam. So that's why we need those somewhat darker values first. And it's easier to have them first and then layer the lighter colors on top of that. So some of the purples here for somewhat darker edges here that are the shadows. Then again, the lighter colors will be placed on top every time when I create those darker lines or darker areas or maybe the colors that kind of look a little bit, not something you would use, maybe like pinkish or some other funny colors. They are going to be just the part of that sandwich of colors, so they will be modified, but they will contribute to that final layer later. And there is a certain order that I'm painting things in. For example, I did the background before I start developing the top of the wave. And for the same reason, I had to develop the inside greens of the wave first before I start overlapping that foam that's falling down that we see is overlapping those greens. So it's just taking some getting used to to kind of plan those things 
to understand, to visualize what's coming first, what needs uh, to be taken care of first, and then it's just more logical. Here in the foreground, I had the base for these shallow waves already set up. I had my kind of mid-tone browns here for the edges of those shallow waves, which are basically like wet sand reflecting the blue of the sky. But we do have the remnants of those collapsed waves and also the thicker edge of the foam, but it's still that shallow wave. It's kind of a lot of foam, a lot of that collapsed foam, and it's very ruffled. So I want to show that it's not just smooth, and that's why I do need the shadows within that edge, and I do need the highlights then. And because I took care of setting up those mid-tone colors, a little bit darker blues there, now the highlights stand out. And I also added a little bit of that lighter color in that big main splash of foam. And you can see how now we actually see that more three-dimensional look starting to shape within it. I also want to mention that if you want your highlights to stand out even more, change the temperature of your whites. If you use very light blues, for example, then it's cooler and if you switch to the very light let's say yellowish white or very light orange white it's going to stand out more against those cooler colors so you will have a little bit of a value contrast and also the temperature the color temperature contrast and that orange, that warmer color, well, not orange really, but that warmer white is going to stand out against cooler colors more. So if you really want to increase that effect of the uh, kind of bright white highlight, definitely you can do that by creating that or emphasizing that temperature contrast, color temperature contrast. If my wave painting tips have been helpful to you so far, please give this video a like. This is how Google will know that it needs to show it to more people and that helps me a lot. And also please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet. I'm posting the pastel painting tutorials but I will be exploring more mediums. Also, in my future videos, I'm going to talk about business side of art, about marketing, about being a full-time artist, about selling the work, all those topics that I'm sure will be interesting to any artist. I don't blend so much when I'm painting, but some of the textures just have to be smoother, like for example, this top of the wave. It is pretty smooth. And I just a little bit kind of pushed the pigment into the surface to get that smoother look. But that is again just the foundation. And I'm going to add some of those kind of ridges, curving ridges, because that's how the water is falling. And to show the shape of that wave, that it's not just kind of flat rectangle of that color but there's water that's curving that is a perfect device to show that to show those curving lines on the top of that wave and overall at this point i'm just refining the colors those lighter colors i can bring more different color variations within that but of course i have to remember to keep the values the darker values so that they don't just become all very light and as far as this foreground i want to make sure that i also have a little bit of those reflections from the foam so i'm going to use a little bit darker lighter color for that so that the lightest foam is actually at the top and then it's kind of reflecting a little bit into that blue surface of the wet sand basically so those 
foam reflections need to be very subtle and also at this point maybe I need to add a little bit of those greens maybe or gray down or blue colors here in the foreground foam that is more of a coverage there and I can also use the brush to shape those spaces between the foam so I will do that a little bit later and right now also it is a good time maybe to bring some of that detail within this foam to create a little bit more interesting edges to show some of that foam sparkle before it actually disappears kind of into that darker area that's more vertical and the sun is not illuminating it that's that more blue part of it and here I want to make sure that I have the brighter highlights on the right on this larger foam burst and also still have those shadows because that is what's showing me that it is a three-dimensional shape and just refining this foreground part so again things that I maybe kind of had in the process might disappear a little bit or I change my mind and start refining it so it's just the way it works and sometimes you end up with a better decision and sometimes you just like well it used to be better it is a fine art to stop in time and it does come with experience but it's still difficult it's still difficult to recognize that point but overall I think this edge of the wave is shaping up nicely the shallow wave that I'm talking about this collapsed foam edge and it just needs some of those more intense more pronounced marks highlights and also some of the shadows maybe within it or better separation between the foam and that darker part of the sand maybe should be kind of lost and found so that's something to work on and also some highlights here within that foam blanket how I call it sometimes so here's that separation between the foam again in different areas a little bit more pronounced and in some I just want it to be kind of more blending with that lighter area with the reflection of the foam if I want to do that I can just bring that lighter color create that lighter area and then maybe create a little bit more lighter reflection underneath and if I need to restore some of those foam lines in that foam blanket with those more intense highlights and this is a warmer color this is kind of more yellow or orange white and it is going to stand out more against those cooler colors that I had before also to continue a little bit some of those foam lines into the inside part of the wave that is going to create that more realistic shape of the wave of the foam because the foam doesn't just stop at the edge of the shadow it continues inside and we need to show that with a change of the value so it changes from bright white or bright kind of warm white into that cooler darker blue or purple color we see that the shape continues and that creates that more realistic look 
and now here with a bristle brush like I mentioned before I can shape that foam a little bit more if I have to if I need to and sometimes you see me using some of those kind of really far-fetched colors but it's just something that I feel like experimenting with and I feel like it brings a little bit more character, a little bit more contrast and particularly as a foundation, maybe like for the blues on top of it, it does bring some warmth that I want to emphasize in certain area like here and I think it worked. I think it's something that definitely worked for me at least and you can experiment with your own palette but what I want to show to my students always it's up to you your color should express a certain feeling capture the light in the scene certain emotion that light creates and color is very emotional and the way we are using it it's going to create a certain feeling so be true to that not so much what you see in the photograph everything else will fall into place and now a very light, very subtle glaze of that lighter blue on the foam, on the foam blanket basically. And I think it also creates more realistic look because there's definitely some reflection of that sky in the foam. And we can see that if we really look closer. And I'm alternating between the a little bit darker blues and a little bit lighter blues and purplish blues, different variations within that. And again, that is helping me to create a little bit more three dimensional surface in the foam, not just that bulky foam, the foam splash, but this shallow foam. And here on top of the wave, I glaze again a little bit with that blue color. Again, to show the reflection of the sky on its smoother part. There's a lot of that going on and in some areas it is more subtle and in some it is more pronounced. That's how things are working in nature. some parts of these edges of the collapsed waves here i can use this bright uh, mid-tone browns and kind of almost orange color and again to and again maybe a little bit of those reflections of the foam into this foreground part and again, I'm using some pink color for that. The color, you probably won't even find that necessarily in the reference. But I already told you that I'm not really tied to the reference in my color choices. Also, I will have a little bit of uh, foam spray. And I'm going to use the toothbrush for that. In this video, I don't really have the whole process, but I do explain it more in my other video. I'm going to have a link in the description below to that video, so you can see the process in more detail if you would like my online classes, self-study courses, and there will be Zoom classes as well. Those are for more detailed, uh, deeper instruction. And if you are in my Zoom class, then you also are getting my critiques. And uh, that is something that a lot of uh, students um, really uh, like and a lot of students told me that uh, they really love my critiques 
and a lot of students told me that my critiques are really helpful. So if you want to be notified when my next Zoom class is scheduled, please sign up for my newsletter and the link is also in the description below. So just a few more highlights here. The foam blanket became a little bit smoother again, so I am going to at least create some highlights, those brighter highlights. While earlier I was layering different colors, modifying them, now I just want to make a mark and let it be for the most part because that creates that expressive look. And when I'm trying to create the motion, the illusion of movement in the water, I want to create a certain energy and the energy also comes with the character of your marks. That's important also. Just minor touch-ups. Then a little bit of a foam spray with a toothbrush. I think I still need to soften that edge of that foam blanket a little bit so maybe that's what's needed but other than that it's just kind of trying to place the brightest highlights in a way that allows the eye to travel kind of invites to explore different areas of the picture and also making sure that the foam within the shadow is not too light because that's going to break up the illusion of that three-dimensional shape. But we do see the bits of foam of this big cloud of the foam at the bottom it actually already starts catching the light but the foam that's just dropping on the left and in the center that one is still within the shadow so I want definitely I want to show that and it's very very close to be finished so I hope you enjoyed working with me on this bright summer wave and if you did please give it a like and check out my other wave demo that I mentioned before because I go into a lot more details about painting wave in that live recording. And until the next video.